in this lecture we're going to study the electrolysis of aqueous solutions and uh, we're going to study the electrolysis of aqueous solutions using inert electrodes now uh, uh, to briefly describe what aqueous solutions is uh, solutions are aqueous solutions are when the electrolyte is dissolved in water aqueous means that something is dissolved in water and electrolysis is done of electrolytes and electrolytes are acids bases and salts acids bases and salts forming aqueous solutions. Now inert electrodes are made from graphite and they're made from platinum and any other inert material. Inert electrodes do not participate in the electrolysis. The only purpose is that they conduct electricity. Uh, now we're going to start off with an example. We can uh, take the example of uh, NaCl aqueous. So we're going to do the electrolysis of NaCl aqueous and it's a dilute solution. Uh, remember this whenever uh, there is going to be a slight difference between electrolysis of aqueous uh, dilute solutions and aqueous concentrated solutions. So whenever we're dealing with concentrated solutions, we're going to explicitly write uh, the solutions are concentrated. If it's not written, that means we're going to assume that the solutions are dilute. Now. Um, so this, since I have I have not written, it's a concentrated solution. So this definitely is a dilute solution. Now I'm going to draw a diagram uh, for electrolysis. Is a beaker, and you have. Uh, electrodes dipped into the beaker and this here is your electrolyte which is uh, in this case it is NaCl aqueous. Now the electrodes are connected to the battery and this side is the positive terminal of the battery this is the positive anode we're going to write that down whereas this side is the negative terminal of the battery this is the cathode the battery is going to give electrons the negative side of the battery is giving electrons whereas the positive side of the battery is pulling electrons uh, or taking away electrons now uh, we're doing the electrons of NaCl aqueous when something is aqueous, it breaks down into its ions. So this NaCl over here is going to break down into Na plus 1 and Cl minus 1. And Na plus 1, since it's positive, is going to get attracted to the negative cathode. And Cl minus 1, since it's negative, is going to get attracted to the positive anode. Now that's NaCl. But when you're doing the electrolysis of aqueous solutions, there's one more thing. That's uh, there's water present as well. Now, since there's a lot of H2O in this, remember this that H2O breaks down into H plus 1 and OH minus 1 ions. So it breaks down into hydroxide and uh, H plus 1 ions. So you have Although you have Na plus 1 Cl minus 1, you have two extra ions. One is H plus 1 and the other one is OH minus 1. So remember this always. This is always going to happen when you're doing electrolysis of aqueous solutions that apart from the two ions coming from the electrolyte, you'll have two ions which would come from water as well. One is H plus 1 and the other one is OH minus 1. Now moving on. Let's try and determine what's going to happen at the anode. Now, if you look at the diagram, since the anode is positive, it's going to attract the negative ions. So it attracts it attracts OH minus one and Cl minus one. So it's going to attract OH minus one and Cl minus one but there's one problem over here and that problem is that different ions have a different tendency to lose electrons for example some ions would not 
like to lose electrons whereas other ions would lose electrons very easily. Now over here you have two ions which are competing. The battery is trying to pull electrons from either one of them. Cl-1 might lose an electron so it might give an electron to the battery because it has, it has an extra electron. Similarly OH-1 might also like to lose an electron. Now it says different ions have different tendencies to lose electrons. The one that loses electrons very easily, that's the one that's going to actually, uh, there's a very high probability, that's the one that's actually going to lose electron. So uh, remember this, that uh, whenever you're doing electrolysis of aqua solutions, now as a rule remember this, that OH minus 1, always loses electrons at the anode. The easiest uh, when it comes to uh, anions it's uh, the easiest for it, it is easiest for OH minus one to lose an electron compared to all your other ions. You have sulfate ions, you have nitrate ions, you have uh, uh, nitrite ions, etc. All these ions, it's OH minus one that that uh, loses electrons very easily. So it's always OH minus one that's going to lose electrons, except there are a few exceptions. And the exceptions are that if halide ions and halide ions are Cl minus one I minus one etc. These are all halide ions. So uh, and the exception is if halide ions are present in concentrated amounts. So they are present in concentrated amounts, that means they are the ones that are going to lose electrons. So then they lose electrons instead of OH minus 1. So you have to watch out for this. Remember I told you initially that if the solution is concentrated, it would explicitly be written that it's concentrated. So if NaCl was concentrated, then instead of OH minus 1, it would be Cl minus 1 that would be losing electron. But in this specific case, uh, this is a dilute solution because I haven't written anywhere this is a concentrated solution. So it's OH minus 1 that's going to lose electron. Now we, when, when OH minus 1 loses an electron, so you have OH minus 1, minus 1 means it has one extra electron, so it's going to lose one electron. And when it loses one electron, it forms a neutral OH. But there's one further problem, there's no such thing as a neutral OH. That OH simply breaks down into H2O and O2. So now again, if I want to rewrite this, there would be 4 OH minus 1 minus 4 electrons. And instead of getting 4 OH, I would that would be breaking down into 2 H2O plus O2. And this is a very important equation. You have to remember this equation by heart. This is going to appear repeatedly in many questions simply because uh, whenever you do, whenever, whenever you are talking about electrons of aqua solutions, the, there's a high probability that OH minus 1 is going to lose electrons. And whenever OH minus 1 loses an electron, you would have to write this equation over and over again. So remember this, whenever OH minus 1 loses an electron, it forms H2O and O2. If we go back to the figure diagram over here, now uh, between Cl minus 1 and OH minus 1, in this case, OH minus 1 loses electrons, and when it loses electrons, it forms H2O and O2. So you're going to see bubbles of O2 gas being formed over here. On the other hand, cathode attracts H plus 1 and 
it also attracts Na plus 1. So that's those are the two ions that are going to get attracted to a cathode. And again, we're going to have the same issue. Now at cathode, what's going to happen? Both H plus 1 and Na plus 1 are going to try and they're going to try and gain electrons. Now different ions have different tendencies to gain electrons. So uh, when it comes to cathode and when it comes to cations specifically, and uh, we're going to discuss their tendency to gain electrons. So we're basically studying the ten their tendency to gain electrons. Now, uh, when it comes to cations, there's one way to figure out which uh, ion has a tendency to gain electron, which ion does not want to gain electrons. And that is by looking at the reactivity series. So I'm going to write down the reactivity series first. So uh, the reactivity series is and we're going to discuss this in another video uh, lecture. The reactivity series is that group 1 uh, cations, are, group 1 metals are the most reactive. So we start off with the group 1 metals and reactivity always increases down the group. So group 1 is the most reactive, then you have group 2, then you have group 3, which and the reactivity decreases. Then you have transition metals and the reactivity decreases even further. So I'm going to write down the standard reactivity series that uh, is uh, asked to be remembered uh, in the CAE syllabus is it's K, Na, then you have Ca calcium, then you have Mg, then you have Al, Zn, Fe, Sn, Pb, then there's H, that's a reference point, you have Cu, H, G, that's mercury, you have Ag, and there are two more remaining, let's uh, write them over here, it's Au which is gold, and there is platinum which is Pt, so that's your reactivity series. The ones on the left hand side, these are the most reactive, so your group 1 is the most reactive, then you move to group 2, then group 3, then you have these transition methods. And these are the, these on the right hand side are the least reactive. So, uh, by looking at the reactivity series, we can infer a few things. And uh, one of this is, uh, for example, you have potassium. That's one of the most reactive in the in the list of uh, ele elements that I've written. Now, potassium, there would be some issues with potassium. Potassium does not like to remain as potassium. It always wants to lose electrons and form K plus 1. For example, it wants to form KCl. It, forms, it likes to form compounds. So, and the only way it can form compounds is that it loses electrons and forms ionic compounds. So it loses electrons. So one thing that we can uh, infer is that more reactive metals, they like to lose electrons. So that's our first statement. Uh, similarly, let's take an unreactive element. For example, we have Ag, and let's take an ion of an unreactive element. We have silver ion. Now, silver is very unreactive. Silver wants to remain as silver forever. For example, gold. Gold would hardly react with anything. Gold wants to remain as gold. Similarly, silver wants to remain as silver. It does not want to remain as a silver ion. So it would quickly try to uh, gain electron from wherever it can get hold of an electron and it would it would form silver back again so so less reactive metals want to remain as 
metals they don't like to form compounds so less reactive metals would like to remain as metals that's the second uh, conclusion that we've reached but since when we're doing electrolysis we're not talking about metals we're talking about the ions cations are mostly uh, metal ions so uh, if you look at the statement carefully the ions of those elements those metals are going to gain electrons which are less reactive because they don't want to form ions in the first place so our conclusion therefore is what's going to happen at cathode is that the less reactive uh, metal let's not write the word metal the less reactive cation since it's less reactive it does not want to actually even form a cation in the first place it wants to remain as uh, in its original form so less reactive cation would always gain electrons at cathode so that's this over here is our final conclusion which is let's highlight this and this is the rule that you're going to use when you're going to do the electrolysis and you're going to write the products of cathode if the ion which is less reactive that is the one that's going to always gain electrons at cathode and in our example we had H plus 1 and Na plus 1 and if we look at the reactor series again H plus 1 is very less reactive so it's it doesn't want to remain as an ion it wants to remain in its original form so H plus 1 is, is the one that's going to gain electrons whereas Na plus 1 and is extremely reactive it doesn't want to remain as Na it wants to remain as Na plus 1 so this is not going to gain electrons so in our case uh, between H plus 1 and Na, Na plus 1, it was H plus 1 that was less reactive. So the equation would be that H plus 1 would end up gaining electrons. And it's going to form, when it, when it gains one electron, it's going to form H. And since H never exists as a, as a neutral atom, it's always diatomic. So it's going to be H2. So you would need 2H plus 1. And this would become two electrons so this over here would be your equation and Na plus one uh, nothing happens to it it does not get discharged in this case